Welcome to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Virginia Beach. I'm Norma Ragland. Today is Sunday, May 21st, the Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. We were established 45 years ago to be a symbol of ecumenism, honoring both the Roman Catholic and Episcopal traditions. We have one worship service with two liturgies. Our worship is designed for you to experience both traditions. As a sign of our commitment to Christian unity, we ask you to remain for both liturgies. Today, Monsignor Raphael Pepper will celebrate Mass. Father Mario Melendez will celebrate Episcopal Holy Eucharist. The service is live streamed. We welcome everyone here and those watching at home. For those watching from outside of Virginia Beach, we invite you, if you are ever in the resort city, to stop by and experience our service. At communion time, if not receiving communion, please come forward for a blessing. For those here, we ask you to silence your cell phones. Please rise, greet those around you. Now, please join in singing our gathering song, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Together we say very good morning to our brothers and sisters joining us from your homes. Good morning to you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, be with you all. Amen. Let us now prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Eucharist as we call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, to have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father mm. to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. You alone are the Lord. You are. 
Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, <clears throat> I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him from their sight. When they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shout of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation 
resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. The resurrection, the ascension, and Pentecost are the three core tenets and feasts in Christianity. Like belief in the doctrine of the Trinity, this trilogy of beliefs meshes to express one profound belief and truth in Christianity, that Jesus is the Son of God. And any attempt to dismantle these manifestations of failure to recognize them and their theological inferences seriously cripples the Christian religion and renders it unintelligible, meaningless, and inconsequential. These events happen swiftly relative to history as mysteries beyond human experience, beyond human understanding, but seen through the lens of faith, they reveal Jesus as God, Jesus as master of the atmospheric gravity, and Jesus as master of the supernatural world. The ascension, therefore, reminds us, my dear friends, that salvation history is in progress, is a process, is perfect, is detailed, and well calculated. Jesus had descended to the earth as God incarnate, God becoming man. He suffered human humiliation. He died on the cross for the atonement of the sins of the world. After the resurrection, he had to leave the earth to go to where he had come from. That's why John tells us 
In his gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. So the ascension of Jesus commemorates his victory regarding the mission on earth, ending in his suffering, crucifixion, and resurrection. And so today, multitudes in heaven are welcoming Jesus into his glory from where he descended to the earth. And indeed, what sets Jesus apart from countless others who came alleging to be the Messiah is his resurrection. His resurrection from the dead and the link between the ascended Jesus, the apostles, and the church is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who now leads God's people. The Holy Spirit will now guide the course of witnessing to the people of God. It's a new life experience directed by the Holy Spirit which has begun and will reach its fulfillment at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, after bonding with his apostles in a passionate final farewell and assuring them of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is taken up and he disappears in the clouds. The apostles gaze into the skies in astonishment, but they hear the message of two angels. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you see him go into heaven. And as Paul explains in the second reading, the Christian goal and hope is to share this glory where Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Now the purpose of the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, who dwells in us, is to help us see the truth about the nature of God. And as told in the famous passage from St. Augustine's Confessions, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. The Holy Spirit, my dear friends, guides us in discovering that the Lord is exceedingly worthy of praise. His power is immense, his wisdom beyond all reckoning. And this is the song of the responsoria psalm of today. The knowledge about God and the praise accorded him, as St. Augustine notes, brings joy. Again, the Holy Spirit guides us to know the truth about ourselves and to discover the limitations that impede our own spiritual growth. Because when we yield to our limitations and temptations, we wrongly make choices based upon the lies and deceits of selfishness, of power, of greed, intolerance, fanaticism, and violence. These may appeal to us as good, so we do them, thinking that will bring us peace and happiness, but invaluably result in our own being hopeless, fearful, despondent, and in fact, despairing. But most significantly, the Holy Spirit is here to guide us to the truth that will enable us to base our lives on justice, on honesty, integrity, compassion, love, and charity. And so today, my dear friends, as we lift up our eyes to heaven with the apostles watching the ascent of our Lord into heaven, he is not leaving us orphans. I'm always with you, he says. We also believe in his promise to send out the Holy Spirit, God's spirit of truth and of love. But Jesus is always with us fully in his humanity as well as fully in his divinity. So anytime we gather around the altar of grace like this morning, the word of God is proclaimed. The priest raises the body, Jesus' body and blood for the new people of God to worship and we receive him 
and identify with him as indeed our Lord and Savior, the light of the world, giving us peace, joy, and meaning in life. And so this singular experience of Jesus must manifest in our everyday life to become witnesses of the word, to love sincerely, to hate what is evil, and hold on to what is good. Amen. Let us rise and profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence, my dear friends, we place our petitions before our God, who hears the prayers of our hearts. Please respond, let us pray to the Lord. That God's pilgrim people throughout the world follow the path of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those living without hope find in the sacraments a source of hope, sustenance, and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That orphaned and abandoned children know loving homes and wise guidance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who flee persecution, that they find safe refuge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather to praise the risen and ascended Lord share his peace and joy with one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops Barry and Susan, Monsignor Raphael, Father Mario and Deacon Gary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Honoring our Larcom Covenant, we pray this week for Grace Lutheran, St. James Episcopal, Holy Family Catholic, and Virginia Beach United Methodist Churches. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father of heaven, and Father of earth, hear and grant our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, who sits at your right hand in glory as our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the grace of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you, the humble and contrite heart. And Lord, wash away our iniquity. Thank Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Father Almighty. Lord our God, we offer sacrifice now in supplication to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gaze in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people as us in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim <laughs> your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, bury our bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome your, them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed spouse in Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, my dear friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Lord Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. A graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your world, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now offer each other the sign of God's peace. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, it is with faith in your love and mercy that we take your body. We thank you for giving yourself to us this morning. Let this gift not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. And now, my dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot be at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate these divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. good morning. Good to see you all here today, this morning. Thank you for being here with us. For those of you who are online, thank you for being with us today. If you are ever around here, please come and say hello to us, okay? En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. 
Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Says the Lord be with you. Oremos, let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fit, fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Lucas, to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so, that, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. El Evangelio del Señor, the Gospel of the Lord. Buenos dias, good morning. Monsignor Rafael, I hope you're, you'll watch this at some point today. I, I, he always, he, he, at some point he watches it. Uh, I'll be quoting uh, uh, San Agosto myself during my homily, so I think you'll appreciate that. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. This I ask in the nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amen. So once again, uh, preachers, pastors, Priests, deacons, we all face a problem when it comes to the Feast of the Ascension along with other feasts in the life of the church. What am I going to say? 
What am I going to preach? How many homilies have you heard on this? Tom, you want to preach on this? Uh, oh, no, see, he said no. See, you see what I mean? I mean, what am I going to say? Well, at the very least, at the very least, I'll just say a couple of things. First, I was thinking of the recent coronation of Charles III, right? Take the coronation of, of, of a king, take the uh, swearing in ceremony of an American president, um, and other similar events. And what do, they, what do they show? They show a powerful image of human ideas of what? Of authority and power. By contrast, the authority that Jesus received at his enthronement is the result of what? Of his vulnerability on the cross and the humility of the people who placed their faith in him. So the, the narratives of, of ascension and enthronement basically subvert, turn upside down our human fantasy for strength and power, right? And instead, present a theology, a way of thinking about God, a, a, of a divine power that flows again, flows not from our ideas of glory and power and strength, but from vulnerability. In other words, this is something that we need to remember, and it's hard for us 21st century Americans to remember. While we may call ourselves winners, we belong to a religion of losers. That's it. And you may say, well, what about God? At least as far as the world is concerned. As far as the world is concerned, Jesus was a loser. Jesus died on a cross like a criminal. That's losing. You could say we see that a little differently. See, the power of God is so different from our own ideas of power that whenever it appears in scripture, it kind of leaves people kind of like, huh? Kind of like perplexed. Now think about it. You go to the book of Acts when the men of Galilee are standing around, kind of like awestruck in the presence of Christ, of, of the ascending Christ, and the two beings in white appear, and Monsignor uh, Raphael mentioned this. Men of Galilee, why do you stand? looking up to our heaven. This Jesus will come as you saw him go. In Luke's gospel, the woman weeping at the tomb of Jesus encountered two beings in dazzling white robes who asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but risen. And if you go back to the second chapter of Luke, an angel of the Lord with an entire heavenly army proclaims to perplexed shepherds the birth of a child. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom he favors, right? Second, here's the other thing that I would like to talk about. We commonly uh, speak of the, of the text we hear today uh, as, uh, as an ascension text, right? But Luke actually never says Jesus ascended. He didn't actually say that. He speaks of Jesus being what? Carried up to heaven. Similar to Mark's gospel, where Jesus is taking, taken up into heaven. Now, Luke gives us premonitions of this ascension into heaven uh, with, you know, with his rejection in a Samaritan village. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go, to go to Jerusalem. And late as his address to the senator in council, quote, but from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. But the notion of this ascension doesn't really enter the tradition, our tradition, onto what? Onto the Ephesians. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. You see his connection as well. If I was preaching to, back when I was in, uh, back in college or even seminary and I was surrounded by mostly college students and maybe even some high school here and there, sometimes in conversations, the ascension comes up. And then I'm told, well, this is why I don't get Christianity, because this whole thing about Jesus ascending, 
Uh, to what? To space? Right? And the, and the whole idea of what? Jesus is ascending and what? He's going he's gonna to bang his head against the Inter International Space Station? Well, okay, let's tackle that. In the, in the concept of how people of the first century saw the world, it was what? It was that you had this three-layer this three world. And you have the heavens, you have the middle, and then you have the underworld, right? But if you notice, when you, when you see Luke and he talks about that, it's, okay, he just makes a little mention and that's it. Why? Because we need to keep this in mind, by the way. What is important to Luke is not what happens to Jesus in the act of being carried up. Even if Luke has no idea what a satellite is, even he wouldn't care. Because, why? Because his focus rests on what? Rest on the disciples left behind and what they will make of their lives. International Space Station or not, doesn't change the fact that Jesus is not with them right there, right now, and what are the disciples going to do? Or for that matter, what are we going to do? And you know me, I love the church fathers, and I tell all Catholic and Episcopalians, read the church fathers. Uh, you can hear my wife right now, it's like, just shut up. <laughs> But no, really, 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 read, read the fathers. And of course, Monsignor Raphael, you like this, because I will also quote St. Augustine of Hippo as part of his own homily, a homily that he gave himself centuries ago on the Feast of Ascension. And he said something, I'm not going to read the whole thing, He's just, I'm going to read just, just a tiny bit. Today our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Let our hearts ascend with him. Listen to the words of the apostle. If you have risen with Christ, set your hearts on the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Seek the things that are above, not the things that are on earth. For just as he remained with us, even after his ascension, so we too are already in heaven with him. Even though what is promised us has not yet been fulfilled in our bodies. It's making that connection. That there is a connection already with the kingdom of heaven. It's just that, what? The bodily resurrection hasn't happened yet. The one that, by the way, we are promised by baptism. Right? Christ is now exalted above the heavens, but he still suffers on earth. All the pain that we, the members of his body, have to bear. He showed this when he cried out from above, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And when he said, I was hungry and you gave me food. St. Augustine says this, why do we on earth not strive to find rest with him in heaven even now through the faith, hope, and love that unites us to him? The disciples, my friends, took the word and the blessing that Jesus was given in his way out, the blessing of, of, of Jesus to heart. And two things, two things distinguish uh, their earlier moments of being together. Worship and joy. Worship and joy. There is no sadness in this new condition that they have now. They are, they are no longer looking to, the, to a distant sky. There is, and there, is, there is even no trauma of some depressing goodbye. No fear of being orphaned. Jesus left his disciples with too much work to do. And of the optional responses, well, self-pity is not going to work. It's not going to work for us either. No, no, no. It was, it was joy. It was joy that would mark the first step of his disciples. Great joy. The kind of joy, exhilarating and contagious, that goes back again. We go back to the second chapter of Luke. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
And this joy will lead to church, lead to church, all of us, into the work of love and service that never ends. And that is good news. Amen. Please rise. In joy, we continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified, the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, worshiped and glorified, he has spoken for the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful, prayers of the people. Pray for the church, for an end of division among Christians, that God inspire us to continue our quest for Christian unity. Pray that all may be one. Hear our prayer. Prayer. Pray for peace, for goodwill among nations, and that all people be treated with dignity and respect. Hear our prayer. Pray for our bishops, our clergy, our staff, and our lay ministers. Hear our prayer. Pray for mothers, both those living and those who have passed on to eternal life. They gave us life, and for that we are thankful. Hear our prayer. Pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, and the suffering. Hear our prayer. Pray for all who have died. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer. prayer. And I pray for all folks that are homebound, homebound uh, for many different reasons. Uh, may God be with them, and may, may we do what we need to do so that they may not feel alone. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. 
accept and fulfill our petitions. We pray not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and that we have done that we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep in eternal life. Amen. La paz del Señor. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. If you are online, type some words of peace. La paz del Señor. La paz del Señor. La paz del Señor. Walked in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Please be seated. The Lord be with you, and also with you, lift up your heart, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to, be placed, to prepare a place for us. That is where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices of the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when you have fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death. You in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share a human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. You stretch out his arms upon the cross 
and offer himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, esto es mi cuerpo, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. Stites me sangre, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and send in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, since Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mi Señor, mi Dios, my Lord and my God. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. The prayer of spiritual communion for those at home. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, 
and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and soothingness of heart Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
today's announcements. Today's altar flowers are offered by Donna Mitchell in honor of her husband, Tim Mitchell, on his birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday this week to Kevin Meek, Tevin Clark, Brittany Harmuth, and Tim Mitchell. <laughs> this week, we remember the wedding anniversary of Celeste and the late Dr. Daniel Romero. Caregiver Support Group will meet today after the liturgies. We look forward to seeing you. We will not meet at Manjaki during May. We look forward to seeing you at the June Manjaki lunch. Please sign up if you plan to attend the 2023 annual parish retreat on Saturday, June 3rd. The sign up sheet to attend and indicate your lunch selection is on the easel in the hallway. Healing prayers will be offered in the chapel every Sunday at 1020 a.m. If you would like to request prayers, please stop in. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Yes. For the June 3rd uh, retreat, it'd be nice if some people would sign up to help with setup and cleanup. Thank you. Please. There is no Bible study this week. Please join us. Uh, next Sunday, I will not be in town, and it has been so difficult to find anybody that I would not be surprised if I cannot find anybody to cover me. So please be ready to do morning prayer on Sunday. It is a combination of the long weekend and a combination that, at, at, as of right now, a fourth of the churches of this diocese have no priest. So, uh, yeah. So, I'll, so a lot of the, the usual supply priests, they're, they're busy. <laughs> they're very busy. And then, of course, Nobody wants to, wants, to, uh, wants to be here for Memorial Day weekend. Well, not here, but, you know, the work. In my case, I have the blessing and the honor of being in South Carolina for, to officiate the wedding of Darden Dickerson. So uh, how, how happy I am about that. How happy I am for both of them. And, and looking, looking very much forward to that. Please rise. May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears you shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. Y la bendición de Padre Todopoderoso, Padre Hijo Espíritu Santo, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.